Hi, I'm Danny from HKN, and this is our second example of the frequency response of LTI systems. So, we are given a circuit with the input F of T and the output Y of T defined as the voltage drop across this capacitor. We are asked to find the input or the frequency response of this circuit, H of omega, and the output Y of T given this particular input. So, the first step in finding a circuit's frequency response is to convert to phasor form. So the input voltage F of T will become the phasor capital F. The output voltage Y of T will become the phasor capital Y. The impedance of a resistor is just its resistance, so this stays 1. The impedance of an inductor is J omega L, so this becomes J omega because L is equal to 1 Henry. And in for the capacitor, we will have 1 over j omega c, c is equal to 1, 1 over j omega. So to find the output volt phasor y, we will apply the voltage divider rule. Uh, y is equal to the input voltage f times the resistance of the, or sorry, the impedance of the capacitor over the total impedance of those three components that are in series. We can simplify this by multiplying both top and bottom by j omega, which will give us f over j omega times, or plus j omega squared, which is just minus omega squared plus 1. The frequency response h of omega is defined as the output phasor y over the input phasor f. So in our case, the frequency response will be 1 over j omega minus omega squared plus 1. Now let's see how this circuit responds to a particular input. Uh, remember that f of t can be written as f1 of t plus f2 of t. And this will lead to the output y of t, uh, y1 of t, plus y2 of t. This is superposition and is a really important concept when you're dealing with multi-frequency inputs. Also remember that e to the j omega t input into a linear time invariant circuit will out with a frequency response h of omega will output h of omega, the frequency response, times that input e to the j omega t. So we'll use these two concepts to solve for our output. Um, we will call 5 f1 and this one f2. So we input 5 into our circuit, f1, and we will get out y1 which will be 5 times its frequency response, which will be h of 0. The frequency is 0 because this is a DC input. Uh, for F2, we'll, be, we'll have e to the j1t input into this circuit. We will get out the frequency response of 1 times the input e to the j1t. So let's find h of 0. That will be 1 over 0 minus 0 plus 1, or just 1. And h of 1 will equal 1 over j minus 1 plus 1, or just 1 over j. That can simplify to negative j. Um, we'll put this in its exponential form, which will give us e to the negative j 90 degrees. So combining that with the superposition concept that we talked about, this output y of t will equal 5 times its frequency response 1 plus e to the j 1t times its frequency response e to the negative j 90 degrees. This can be rewritten as 5 plus e to the j t minus 90 degrees. This minus 90 can be thought of as a phase change. And we see that our DC input 5 remains unchanged. So this 5 plus e to the j t minus 90 degrees is our output in response to this input 
through that circuit. Remember, if you're stuck, HKN offers free tutoring services. Visit our website and email any of those names that you see under the tutoring tab, and everyone will be willing to help you with your ECE 210 needs.